Hi everyone, I'm Tori. I'm Carly. And we're your Tunda Studios coordinators. We want to thank you so much for tuning in to this episode and we hope you enjoy it. This week we have a new piece on fashion and fashion trends. So let's take it to Nicole and Jamika. Welcome to Retunda Studios, I'm Nicole. And I'm Jamika. And today we're starting the first ever fashion segment for Retunda Studios. So yay! So welcome. Okay. So what are we going to be talking to them about today, Jamika? Well, in honor, in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Week, we'll be featuring vintage styles and comparing them with more updated versions of the same trend. Okay. All right. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah. So let's get started. Okay. Go ahead. You tell them about the, the first little trend that we have for them today. Okay. Our first trend is the circle skirt. Our icon that we're using is the princess and actress Grace Kelly. Oh, Grace. I know, love her. From her Rear Window movie by Alfred Hitchcock. The style was very iconic during that time. It's a full it's skirt, and it's called the circle skirt. And our updated um, version is being rocked by First Lady Michelle Obama. Okay. And, yes, Michelle. Yeah, right. And pop star Ariana Grande. Baby, baby. Okay, the first lady is wearing a fuller version of the trend, and it's more fuller because as we get older, our hips t tend to spread, and this look actually conceals it. And the um, for the younger crowd is pop star Ariana Grande. She is wearing a more bolder and shorter version. Right, to for the legs, you the know, legs. we gotta show the legs. Mm -hmm. you know. And the bolder print actually brings a youthful twist to it. All right, so up next, we have the high-waisted swimsuit. And you know, it, it's coming that time where, you know, just in case you don't get that belly right, this, this high-waisted swimsuit will cover up like everything. It sucks, sucks it in. It sucks <laughs> it in. It holds everything in. So who we have featured for this one, we have the icon Marilyn Monroe. Everyone loves Marilyn. And then we also have Rachel McAdams from The Notebook featured in this. And, and hers is, you know, it's, it's really nice. It's very classic, very simplistic. You know, very, it's nice. And then we have Top Shop Model over here with the, the nice tropical prints, the very brightness. It's, it's something oh, amazing. Wow, we have the Peter Pan collar. Oh, I love it. And if you're thinking of the man in green flying around with Wendy, you, not him. you'd be right. But you'd be right. Not him, though. But it's not him. <laughs> so our icon is 60s model Jean Shrimpton. Oh, Jean. Love her. Mm -hmm. She's just fabulous. She is. And then... Um, the more updated version is Glee actress Naya Rivera. She's if you want to take a cue from her, an easier way to do this would be if you want to if you have a nice crisp collar shirt and you can you can throw a nice sweater over top to get the look. And then actress Emma Stone has one just already built into her shirt, and it's more going back more towards the vintage look. So the next thing I'm going to tell you about is the simple black dress. Now, ladies, if you don't have this in your closet, this is a, a definite necessity. You can dress yes. it up, you can dress it down. Like It's something that every woman needs to have in your closet. So our fashion icon is no other than Audrey Hepburn, of course, um, famous for Breakfast at Tiffany's. And my personal favorite, Kim. I love how she she, she took the, the simple black dress at her designer, put a keyhole in it. It just really dressed it up that made it very sexy at the same time. And then we also have Taylor Swift. Taylor, you know, she's very classic, that very country, down-home, southern girl. So she, she did the high neck with the, with the lace, but she still kept it very classy, but, but elegant and very appropriate for her age, showing her legs and, you know, it was really nice. So that's the black dress, whatever fits you. And for you men out there, don't worry. We, we didn't forget about you. Yeah, Hold on now. Too. Okay, we have icon James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause. Oh, yeah. get it, James. He's rocking his yes. bomber jacket. Very nice. And we have the beautiful, sexy Justin Timberlake mm -hmm. in a more dressy but casual style. Night on the town look. It's very nice. With Jessica. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, singer Bruno Mars also in a more grungy, Rugged look, rugged. I would say. More, more urban, you know, yeah. casual, but like, I can get down with them. Yeah. Kind of look, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Get down with them. Um, so next, you know, ladies, it's cold outside. And, you know, we don't, we, the hair blows everywhere. It's just, it's, it's a mess. So, you know, the perfect alternative, grab a beret. 
grab a beret and just put it on. So our fashion icon for that, who who other than us? I mean, it's Martin Luther King. We gave Dr. King his. We got to give Miss Coretta hers. So um, she's our icon for that. And and our modern celebrities, we chose Janet Jackson and Nicole Richie, and they and they each did the beret in a different different way. The colors too, they're in a wide range of colors, and you can just wear it to the side, pull it back, you know, do whatever, make it your own, be creative. All right. Well, that's the end of everything for today, you guys. We're going to leave you with some really quick tips, though. Is that all right with you, Janita? That's fine. All right. Let's show them. And thanks, guys, for watching our first ever fashion video on the Rotunda Studios. See you next time. Bye. Well, that was really insightful. I never really thought about how often trends come back in the style like that. And with that, here's Nick's Picks Super Bowl edition. Welcome to Nick's Picks Super Bowl edition. I'm Nick Nigliero. We have the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks meeting in New York on February 2nd in this season's Super Bowl. It's the best offense versus the best defense. The unstoppable force of Peyton Manning's offense versus the immovable object of Eric Thomas' defense. Let's, let's think about it though. The Super Bowl's in New York this year. New York's a, a pretty cold place, especially in February. So we're going to take a look at the weather for this game. And snow is a big possibility on February 2nd. If it snows, Manning might not be too much a factor. Not because he can't play in the cold weather, because he's proven this season he clearly can. It's because in snow, quarterbacks aren't too great at holding onto the football and throwing it properly. So with that being said, each team is going to have to turn their run games and their defenses. It's Monte Ball and Noshawn Moreno versus Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson. Here, advantage, Seattle. Noshawn Moreno and Monte Ball, both very, very good running backs. But compared to Marshawn Lynch, they don't. Lynch is not only the better running back, but he alone is only 240 yards away from having more yards than Monte Ball and Noshawn Moreno combined. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. Then if you add Russell Wilson's 539 rushing yards, granted he is a quarterback, so they're scrambling yards, but still, he's an amazing runner. That gives Seattle the huge running advantage. As I mentioned before, a big problem with cold, snowy weather is holding onto the football. Ball and Marino lost an overall three fumbles over last season. I know you're saying, that's not a lot, Nick. What are you talking about? But compared to Lynch and Wilson's combined one, two fumbles is a lot. Two fumbles in one, let's say, I don't know, Super Bowl can change the whole outcome of the game. Then the next up matchup we really have to look at is the defenses. The Broncos allow 24.9 points per game compared to Seattle's league leading 14.4 points allowed. Both teams are really, really stingy when it comes to their run defenses. They each allow 101.6 yards per game, tied for seventh in the league. The separation between the defenses is Seattle's suffocating secondary. They only allowed a league-leading 172 passing yards per game. On the other side, the Broncos were one of the league's worst, allowing 254.4 passing yards per game. This gives Seattle a huge advantage. I know you're saying, Nick, we just you just told us that passing isn't going to be a uh, factor. Why does this give them an advantage? Because Denver throws the ball. They have Peyton Manning. He's one of the league, he's one of the all-time greats. They're going to throw the ball, ball. Which brings me to my next point: the X factors, which of course I just mentioned. Peyton Manning for the Denver Broncos, record breaker possible MVP. Manning had a phenomenal 2013 campaign. He broke six records, six, one, two, three, four, five, six passing records that had been around for a while. Manning out of the gun. Manning lets it fly. It's caught by Thomas. There's the record.
record for Peyton Manning. His football IQ is through the roof. He gets on a line. He, I don't ever think he actually like runs the play that he calls in the huddle because he walks up to the line and he, he adjusts everything. He sees, the, sees what the defense has given him and he adjusts. On Seattle's side of the ball, their X Factor is the guy who's going to be responsible for debunking Manning's magnificence. No, I'm not talking about Mr. Stanford grad with a 3.9 thug, Richard Sherman. I'm talking about their phenomenal Pro Bowl free safety, Earl Thomas, my front runner for Defensive Player of the Year. Thomas has been the biggest reason for Seattle's success. He reads quarterbacks well, he matches up with opposing defenders, and he makes his presence known. He hits hard, and he locks down on D. With Wes Welker, with Demarius Thomas, with Julius Thomas, you're going to need a guy who can match up to these guys and stop them. Earl Thomas is going to be the guy who's going to go to each one of these guys and fix everything that's wrong. Earl Thomas will not allow something big to happen behind him. He's too good for that. When I truly look at all these factors, in my head, there's only one true Super Bowl champ. That is the Seattle Seahawks. They're going to be hoisting up the Vince Lombardi trophy and they're going to be going to Disneyland after the game on Sunday. If you have any questions for me or you just disagree with me, because I did have to rush through this a little bit, uh, tweet me at Nick Canoli 10 should be like right here. Or tweet me at Rotunda Studios. Right here. I hope you have a fun and safe Super Bowl weekend. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the Super Bowl commercials. But remember, we still have class on Monday. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, that's all from us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if you want to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, check us out at Rotunda Studios. We hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, it's that's always a great day to be a Lancer.